owner and operator of the car bookstore. Oh, what's happening? Greetings. Good to see all of y'all here. We know that y'all came a long way, so I'm not going to take any time. But I do want to let those of you know something about this black man that's sitting right here with us. Didn't take a lot of money to bring him here. The only thing that brought him here was his love for black people. As the brother said, he's, he's published two books, Black Holocaust and Culture Bands. Now, it may, seem, it may seem like divergent issues, but as we know, when a person has an identity, such as our identity as black people, when that identity is stripped away, when you're made to think the very nature of your, your own creation is somehow a gift or, or, or given from someone else, then you become a people of amnesia, a people who have no sense of self, and then easily wiped off the face of the planet, easily given to the Tuskegee experiment, easily given to the AIDS experiment, easily given to the NOR plant that's being given to our children right now in Baltimore. So this is a timely topic. The brother's going to reach back into hundreds of thousands of years. But we know we got so much to carry today. So I would like y'all to please stand up. Give our brother a hand. Mr. Dale Jones. It is a pleasure to be here. The hospitality in here feels real, real, real good. It feels very dynamic in here. It feels extra good to me because after three years after writing uh, Culture Bandits and the second book, Black Holocaust, this is the first black campus that has invited me. Strange, huh? I mean, I've been to Penn. I'm going to Emory University in Atlanta. I've been to Drexel. I've been to all these white colleges. And I'd like to thank the brothers and sisters from Delaware State for inviting me. And I will be back next week taking part in a panel discussion on the Black Nationalist Day. That's very strange to me, and that has been a painful experience. You know what I'm saying? It don't take a whole lot of money to get me anywhere to deal with our people. However, about black universities, what is it? We are the, are the people who are tumbling downhill so fast, we don't even realize that we're moving. We don't even realize. Who is in between the information and the sufferer? Who's in between the information and the masses of our beautiful, loving, dynamic, soulful people? What is happening? What is going on? I say we're in the middle of a holocaust. A black holocaust. The continuation from the suffering from 640 A.D. A.D. No, we have to realize and understand clearly what is happening to us. We're so used to dying that we pay it no mind. We pay it no mind. We're used to death. You can turn on the TV and see black children dying. That is unacceptable. To anyone that's acceptable to, you have to check your mental side. You have to check your mind. Whenever you can turn on CEN, CNN, and see a black baby held up like a chicken, dying right before our very eyes. Is our appetite for death so cultivated from watching aliens, from watching Thundercats, from watching Tiny Toons, from watching Freddy? nightmare on Elm Street, that now when real dying is delivered to us, we think it's a joke. We think it's a game. We think it does not affect our baby sitting next to us. No, oh, but that ain't true. That is not true. It's all connected, you know. Every African in this world is connected. It's connected in the eyes of white supremacy. They hate us all equally whether they can use you or whether they can't. This is just the beginning. We just want to paraphrase what we're going to talk about here because we're talking about something very real. The threat to the African, the first man, the first lady to walk this earth. Now, did I say that? No, LSB Leakey and the Leakey family, the great anthropological family, did the research 
and the information is in. We, the people darker than blue, was the first ones here. Chancellor Williams, our illustrious elder, who wrote the book, Destruction of Black Civilization, passed while I was in Washington about a month ago. And he asked a very critical question. How did the great people, the African people, get from the pyramids to the projects? How that? How that? The evidence is that we are who we claim to be. Oh, yes, we are. You know why? Our ancestors stamped our faces on the artifacts. Right. Not nobody else. End the discussion. Look at the Sphinx. That looked like my uncle, huh? Right. Here in the United States or in Latin America where we have the Olmec heads, that the carbon dating proves are thousands of years old, they have our faces on it. Right. So there's no question who we are. How did we get from such a dynamic, dynamic, energized people, intelligent people, humanistic people, into the bottom rung of the ladder in every corner of this globe, where you can click on your television and watch us die, watch our babies die. However, we have an appetite for death cultivated by the white supremacist control of the mass media. And that's what we're going to talk about. But first, I have to convince you that there is indeed a Holocaust. I don't care who's speaking to you. I don't care if it's Dell Jones, Dr. Ben. I don't care whether it's Shockley. I don't care whether it's President Bush. Check out what they said. I want your intellect tonight. And just because I say it, don't believe it, check me out. I'll show you where to run, where to check it out. I don't speak on nothing I don't have evidence of. Because then it's an opinion, and we all have opinions, and our opinions are based on our experiences. We have been suffering from barbarism. First of all, who are the people darker than blue? We are the people who build the pyramids, who plotted the rising and descending of the Nile by the celestial bodies. We are the people who did eye surgery. We are the people who used technology and came up with mathematics. So crystal clear, so exact. To the pyramid. And the Sphinx sit on shifting sands, but it has not moved because it's plotted by the celestial bodies. London Bridge fell down, didn't it? The Leaning Tower of Pizza Leans. Why does it lean? Because it's up there wrong. <laughs> and they have you celebrating how wrong they could be. Right. They had to condemn it. They used to have tourists coming in. Yeah, this is the lean. <laughs> That's so stupid, it doesn't even make sense. That they celebrate their mistakes. They didn't know what pie was. But the African, who had the knowledge and the humanistic characteristics, Genetically built in that we didn't use technology for weaponry. No. We'd have never split the atom to kill nobody. We had gunpowder. We didn't make an explosion to send a projectile called a bullet through somebody's brain. If we knew something, we used it to make things better. But that's where we come from. And we still have those humanistic tendencies within our genes. We still feel it because we suffer so much and we came down on them like we should yet. Because we don't understand, you know. We think everybody's the same, but we're victims of white supremacy. Let's understand that our ancient forefathers, our ancestors that we celebrate in Black History Month, which is every month, every day, every hour, every minute, every second. Not the shortest month of the year. Our ancients were attacked by the Arabs, destroying our civilization, pushing the Africans southward. That's why all North Africa is now in the hands of the Arabs, and that the sub-Sahara is where we stay, even splitting countries like the Sudan, which the north is run by the Arabs, and the south is run by the people darker than blue. It's all in our reality. The Arabs tore us asunder, drove us with the expansion of the desert 
and their vicious murdering armies, we died. And we have been dying ever since. We have been dying and no one weeps for us. We don't even weep for us. We pretend it's no happen, you know. We pretend it's not going on. We just look straight ahead at our own reality. But sooner or later, there's going to be incursion of death in your family. The Greeks and the Romans forced themselves into Africa, conquering slaughter and murder, forcing its way, driving our civilization further, further, further away from its normalcy. <laughs> All the way up to good old Crystal Ball Cologne, who they changed his name to be Christopher Columbus. Did you know that Christopher Columbus, for 21 years, practiced slavery on the Guinea coast before 1492? Matter of fact, he found his way to the so-called New World from the African, who had been traveling back and forth and back and forth just as easy as the currents push you toward the shore. Because we knew that the earth was round. You know, fall off the end of the earth. To know the celestial bodies, you know that the earth is round. To not know them, you think it's flat. And you go to the end and you drop off. Well, I wish they could have fell off because our suffering has been terrible. Columbus traveled to the so-called New World, killing almost all the red men. All of them. Columbus and those who followed destroyed all of the colonagos. All of what they call the Carib Indians. Where are they? If I'm lying, I'm flying and I'm still standing here. So don't judge me on it. Check your history book. Don't trust me. Check me out. They're gone. Killing them with barbarism. Therefore, that means genocide has been executed by these folks before. I'm not telling you what they may do. I'm telling you what they did. Replacing the red man in the islands, from the Bahamas to Trinidad, with Africans, our ancestors, drug away from their homeland, their culture, the women and the men separated, beaten, robbed, and raped, and all their gold, land, labor, and resources stolen. And they've been stealing it ever since. Columbus set that in motion, you know. Right on up to 1884-85, when the Berlin Conference, when the European powers sat down and decided to carve up Africa as if it was a piece of pie. And those states still stand. We have a nerve to fight over the balkanization of Africa. England, you take this. France, you take this. Portugal, you take this. Germany, you take that. Our land labored resources. And the people were enslaved. In 1904 to 1907, and you see I'm traveling fast through history because I want to get you somewhere. I want to get you to today. You know, since we're talking about history, if we're not going to get to today, because today is what's important to you, but you have to base your strategies or tactics on knowing what happened yesterday. See? In 1904, 1907 in Namibia, the Kaiser of Germany killed 16 million Africans. And they want me to cry over Anne Frank. <laughs> 16 million alone in Namibia. To this day, there's not a million people in Namibia. Slaughter. Leopold of Congo took over Congo and killed millions of Africans. He killed so many Africans till the white League of Nations said, wait a minute, man, cool out. Stern, man, be cool. They had to censor him. Millions cut off breasts, penises, ears, nose. If you didn't bring in your rubber quota, you were whipped, raped, and destroyed. King Leopold, check your history book. 
King Leopold. I call him the crazy king. He had the nerve to travel to Egypt. And he thought he was a pharaoh. He was so jealous of what we had, he tried to destroy the people who would create such a dynamic culture and reality. King Leopold. The dying. Cecil Rhodes, Cecil Rhodes in Southern Africa. And the new president is what? A Rhodes Scholar. Hey, look at here. How can he take a pledge to Cecil Rhodes and be true to you? Tell me. How can he have your goodwill at heart when he bend down and say, I take a pledge to the life and continuing the policies of Cecil Rhodes, who gave us South Africa, Rhodesia, which of course we snatched from him and it's now called Zimbabwe. And I went to Zimbabwe after the war because we helped out with the war. We raised money, clothes, medical supplies. So after you win, you roll on through. And freedom rings in Zimbabwe. No, 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 it's not perfect. But freedom rings, snatched out of the hands of those who supported the deadly Cecil Rhodes. That not enough. But the Holocaust continue. And how does it affect us? It gets us involved with them taking other people's stuff. <laughs> huh? Was not African soldiers in World War I a war of imperialism? When Africa was under colonialism, we were fighting for them in World War I. How that? Tell me. How that? It's because of menticide. We don't know where we fit. We don't know where we belong. How can you be being lynched? all over the South and be fighting for the army. Tell me. Somebody tell me. It doesn't compute. It's not logical unless we look at the machine of metricide that makes Negroes out of great Africans. And that's what our positions in today. That's what we're going to talk about. We're going to talk about Martin. How do we make Negroes out of Africans? World War I, we fought and died so they can continue to control us. That do not make sense. In World War II, A. Philip Randolph and them came along again and said, why don't, why don't we prove we're citizens fought by dying for them? In a fight that we have nothing to do. We're fighting over who's going to own us. Hitler or Roosevelt? <laughs> Come on, man. You know what I'm saying? In Korea, we died helping them maintain the yellow man in servitude in his own country. We died. In Vietnam, we died against the just struggles of the Vietnamese people to control their own destiny. We died. In Grenada, six weeks after I left the island of Grenada, they invaded, killing men, women, and children to control African people on that little tiny island. With 100,000 people, there are more people in West Philly than there is in Grenada. And they unleash brutal, vicious power with African soldiers on the front line. Let me tell you what happened. Airborne tells me, Black Airborne tells me, that they were in a plane flying somewhere. Because white supremacy don't have to tell you when you're in their military where you're going. Shut up, sit down. And ride. Well, in the middle of the journey, you know what white supremacy said to them? Uh, this is not, this I repeat, this is not, this is not. <laughs> no, 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 no. This is not practice. We're going into combat. And the brother said, oh, sugar. I wanted to be all I wanted to be, but I didn't want to be dead. <laughs> so they just riding in this plane and they're issued live ammunition and they know it's the real deal so one turned to the sergeant where are me? shut up line up hook on jump 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 they were all crisscrossed that day <laughs> jump right out of the plane into a firefight not knowing what country they in who they fighting or what they fighting for Dying all around, killing people and dying. So the brothers are fired, bam, bam. 
Then behind a bush, somebody jumps up and fires. Nah, 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 nah. Dreadlocks fly in the air. They say, oh! Ooh. You. Where are we? That was a black man. I thought we was in the Middle East. Because they had just killed the Marines, blew up the Marines. Blew up their dormitories in Lebanon. Bam, 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 bam. Another bronze runs up and throw a hand grenade at them. They say, whoa, we're in South Africa. We're fighting ourselves. And not till the firefight was over. And they had killed all the brothers and sisters who were in their way. Did they ride, walk past a billboard that said, welcome to the revolutionary country of Grenada. Dying and don't know where you are. Dying for white supremacy, our children. It's not the child's fault. It's mom and dad's fault because we didn't school them. They even tell you <laughs> during the service so you can go to college. That don't make no sense. Look at the paperwork. If you're so poor, you got to join the service to go to college, you qualify for all kinds of grants. It doesn't make, no one tells the kids that don't make sense. You can't, you don't have to fight eight years, four years to build up money to go to college. When there's money allocated for that, you can take out of a piece of loan and keep getting up. Then we're not connected to young people. We can't even tell them that. So they died all over Grenada. The place where I stayed next to Radio Free Grenada was totally destroyed. Had we not left, had we stayed the extra two months, hey, somebody else would be making this speech. Men, women, and children, little tiny island. Ronald Reagan, yeah, we beat them up Grenada. Then Panama, we send our children, we let them send them to Panama to steal the head of state, to kidnap the head of state. Noriega, who was a CIA agent, to secure the Panama Canal so they can continue our exploitation. That's right there in front of our face. How come black newspapers don't say that? How come that's not taught in black colleges? Then you're not being taught to survive and build for tomorrow. You're stepping in traps. No other people are stepping in. They put coal and power up front. He said, yeah, I'm front man. But Swarthcoff ran the deal. They didn't trust him to run the deal. He didn't get his uniform dirty. We died. We died in Panama. And we killed our brothers and sisters in Panama. You know, when the light goes out at the White House, they laugh. See, I can't believe it's going to last forever. <laughs> Somebody is telling us. Somebody pulling the sheet off us. This is a good deal. So, think back to the Civil War. Oh, Abe and them, the North was getting their butt kicked. They said, hey, we got to get some black troops to win this thing. He said, let them kill white people? Never mind, they fighting them white people and killing them themselves. Now let's think logically. When he decided they could use the brothers to dust off a few rednecks, who was our enslavers down south, where were they? Was there fighting going on in Mississippi? Was it in Kentucky? It was Gettysburg. So they were losing. Because as soon as you make a turn from Gettysburg, you wear Washington, D.C. And war is about capturing the capital city of the people you fight. So we were used and abused in Grenada, in Panama, in Panama. The reason why they jumped on Noriega is that he closed a bank that belonged to the CIA that laundered drug money. See? And after they came in and stole Noriega and kidnapped him, that ain't what I'm saying now. The federal judge the other day said that Noriega was what? A prisoner of war. Stole the head of state now. I think somebody boogied in and grabbed the president of the United States. They want to blow up the whole world. The arrogance of it all. The arrogance. 
and talk right up in our faces like we can't say one and one is two. You know? Professional lying machines, all sorts of dead copal who belong to the Trilateral Commission, the same commission that's running the country. You know? All sorts of Dan Rathers and Karen Orr. Professional liars! Remember Howard Cosell in the Muhammad Ali fight? You ever, when he called a fight, when Muhammad Ali was fighting, and he had a white opponent, he would change the rules of the game. Well, it's obvious Muhammad was going to duck the dude off, right? But he would change the rules, and he'd be calling. Remember, no matter what your eyes see, the beauty of Muhammad Ali, a tall man, over 200 pounds, float like a butterfly and sting like a bee, Mobile, agile, and hostile. Beautiful work of art. Dusting him off, right? He would change the rules. Now all of a sudden he would say, and look at Ali's opponent take that beating. And look at the courage in him. Look at him stand up. He's taking a beating. He's still staying up. Well, the object is not to get your butt kicked. It's to kick butt. <laughs> but they change the rules and call it right in front of your eyes. Look at the courage. Courage was not an issue. Is whether you can whoop somebody's butt. Then he said, he's down, he's up, look at him, look at the courage. Now the man, now brother, would have stayed down. Because you know when you're getting dusted off, you know whether you can beat that dude or not. You say, I ain't getting up, no, I don't lay down here and get paid. <laughs> See, why would you get up? But he gets up, look at the courage, look at that, he changed the rules. And what do we say next morning? Did you see Ali? He was good, yeah, but that guy had courage. That's editing right in front of your eyes. The mass media does that. It qualifies all phenomena. For example, the President of the United States says, we're going to invade Panama because of, uh, 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 let's see, uh, uh, the cutoff drugs. Yeah, 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 yeah. Never mind, he's the biggest drug runner in the world has ever seen. That's George Bush, covert action. Biggest drug runner the world has ever seen. Him and Sissy Oliver North. Running drugs, undermining countries with the money, enriching the banks, Chase Manhattan and them getting rich, fat cats. We're going to get in there and, uh, yeah, get drugs. That's the reason we'll tell you. Well, what Noriega had done is he had closed the CIA bank. And when they overthrew Noriega, the four leaders of that country was the four main officials of that bank that Noriega had closed. He also was saying, I don't know if I'm going to give up this. Uh, 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 I don't know if I'm going to let you renege on taking the Panama, uh, the Panama Canal, which was critical. It's critical for white supremacy and capitalism to control the canal and the Horn of Africa is where Somalia is. And that's where they are now. So everything, they have one motive. But since we are not prepared yet to make the analysis, and those who are supposed to make the analysis for us interface with white supremacy. All of them. Did you see them in the inauguration? All of them. With a Rhodes Scholar who said, y'all can be at the inauguration, but the first float, we're going to have 97 Elvis Presleys. <laughs> Culture bandits. That's why they won't let Elvis die. He's the king of culture bandits who stole our culture and made a fortune with it. Culture bandits. And it's critical that they steal your culture because it keeps you confused. Zap them with your laser beams. Desert Storm, Desert Storm, same thing. They want a military presence in there. They had given the, the, the guns and the gas and the biological, chemical warfare to both Iran and Iraq. Because you can't, you can't say what weaponry works unless it's actually put in full effect. And they let Iraq use all them biological, chemical warfare agents against the Iranians, who they were pissed off because they had snatched some of them and kept them for a few years, do you recall? They kept them for a few years. That's how Ted Koppel got a show. 371st day, 375th day, America held hostage about the hostages in Iran. 
He was so effective, they kept him on and gave the boy a job. Okay? And that's how it works. So let's first wrap it up, because I want to get where I'm going. The Holocaust has been going on since 640 AD. We have been dying every way known to mankind. We have been fighting for all the wrong issues, all the wrong causes, for everybody but ourselves. We have been kept in a menticide state so we can't make the analysis. And how do we get in a menticide state is where we were going to go next. But first I have to stop here and tell you where you stand right now, why we in the room, and why I came from Philadelphia. The Black Holocaust, which is continue, has moved into its final phase. It is now, we have been now labeled for death all over this globe. In the Global 2000 paper issued to Jimmy Carter says that 2.7 billion people of color must be erased from the face of the earth because of scarcities, because there's not enough land. 2.7 billion people of color. Look it up. It's called Global 2000. It should be in the library here. It should be in the main library. No secret document now. It's right there in front of us. Jimmy Carter. Remember now, think about Jimmy Carter. He was your first redneck president. Right? Remember? Now, after all the politics got a bad name, they decided to use Jimmy Carter. And they put a little haste, a, a little uh, hay in his mouth, put a lumberjack shirt on him, and said he was just a good old homeboy from Jabalucha and that he was a peanut farmer. He was a nuclear physicist, I, I, who ran a nuclear submarine in the Navy. I, he was never no joke. And the peanut farm was a sidebar of his family. He was also a member of the deadly trilateral commission, the, the commission controlled by David Rockefeller and the Rockefeller family the ones who give you the New World Order. And the only reason you have a New World Order moving on you, moving on you, moving in, because the Old World Order don't work no more. Because the imminent fall of South Africa, Angola has been liberated, Mozambique has been liberated in Southern Africa. Now the push is to squeeze those races from South Africa into the sea. But why is that important to America and the rest of the white supremacist nations? It's because the strategic materials from Southern Africa run their space program, nuclear capability, and their industries. And the gold and diamonds also enrich their little fat pockets. So that's what we face. They say freedom will never come to you because it will hurt me. Totally. You would rearrange the whole configuration of the world. All of it would change if I let you get down with that. That ain't gonna happen. And we'll do anything. We'll get a group called Renamo in Mozambique to try to keep Mozambique from getting its actual freedom, where they can use the wealth of that nation for education, for health, and to fight off famine and to build the infrastructure for a new society for African people. In Angola, on the other side, the same thing. We will put UNITA against you. We will we'll have the CIA bankroll them so freedom never actually come to Angola because you will squeeze me. And let me tell you this. Now, this ain't going to make me popular. This never made me popular. I don't want to be popular. I want to be correct. The biggest trick ever pulled on you was the release of Nelson Mandela. Nelson Mandela has always been an integrationist controlled by the Communist Party of South Africa. Always, Joseph Slovo and his wife was controlling the ANC. The reason why they're comfortable with the ANC is because it's integrationist. First of all, let me give you a definition of revolution. Revolution is logic. Revolution only means to revolve 360 degrees from your oppressive state into the light of freedom. 
So as long as Nelson Mandela is down with them, the land will not change hands. The land labor resources of the people of South Africa will go, continue to go to white supremacist nations. Got that? Steve Biko was beat to death immediately. They ain't hold him as a trump card for 27 years, and it's now beginning to come out. It's now beginning. See, they play with our emotions. I mean, we cried and we wept. Yeah, they were wrong, keeping the brother in for 27 years. They were wrong. But we don't make a political analysis. We make emotional analysis. That's why we always led by ministers. Preachers, Christian. Preachers, Muslim. And the rest is athletes and entertainers. No wonder we're running around in a circle. <laughs> we don't have political thinkers or we ignore them. So it's important to understand, what is the precedent for that? In Kenya, the Mau Mau was seizing control of that nation. So they had Yamo Kenyatta up in the mountains, just like they had Nelson Mandela. They brought Kenyatta down, made him head of the nation, burning spear, and freedom never came to Kenya. The first thing he did was start shooting Africans on white people's lands as squatters and poachers. So the historical precedent is there. Understand the knowledge of your history means you can't pull that same trip or, trick, trick on me. That ain't going to get it. So understand clearly and then don't be convinced. Think about it. Check it out. Never be convinced easy. Because when we change you to an African Senate, we want you there forever. And to be there forever, you have to get into your stuff. You have to check it out. Use your intellect. Ain't nothing more dynamic than African intellect when it's in full effect. But when other people are playing in it like silly buddy, making Mr. and Mrs. Potato Head out of us. The Global 2000 paper presupposes that 2.7 2 billions of people had to be moved from the face of the earth and they dubbed them to be people of color. The brothers, uh, the, excuse me, the boys in the stink tank had to come up with a way to remove 2.7. That's a lot of people. Plus you got cracking AIDS. You have war, you have famine. You can turn on the television and watch people die. Yeah, you, you, did you see how they inched us into wanting reality as if we were the Romans in a Colosseum of seeing real death? Did you see how they do it? You know how they did it? They went from all these cop shows and police work, because that's all it's on. I don't care if it's a salt and pepper team in Beverly Hills or not. You know what I'm saying? You know how they eased us in it? They gave us bad boy, bad boy. Oh, what you gonna do? Oh, what you gonna do when they come for you, bad boy? And watch people really get their butt kicked. Watch real people really get locked up. Mm -hmm. Not knowing when uh, I'm in communication, give me some film and I can tell you anything's happening. Well, we're arresting this perpetrator right here. That could be a revolutionary. That could be a guy who feeds his children. That could be a man taking care of his family. That could be misidentity. You find out in the courts who you locked up and whether they were guilty of what they did. Curbside justice they sell. And they show you bad boy, 911, and all these shows of real police jacking up real people. Of course, they missed and showed you Rodney King, and that kind of pissed you off. <laughs> Global 2000. So they set you up for the carnage to death. You're beginning to see real crime, real perpetrators, real cops in action, real rescue missions, real, that's an appetite for death. Tell me, will somebody please tell me? Is something mentally wrong with the people, and that's all of us, who for entertainment watch people die? For entertainment, we see Freddy. We see Nightmare on Elm Street. And when you ask a young brother and sister, I go into the prisons and I go into youth study centers, and I say, well, why'd you like that flip? Well, it was, I didn't, it was phony, man. I said, well, what do you mean it's phony, Holmes? He said, phony, because when he got hair cut off, it did a little real. <laughs> and that's what we think, right? Terminator, they spent $100 million to make death look real. 
to make things jump out of body parts, to see decapitations. What's that boy Charles Bronson? What's those pictures he used to make? Death wishes. When we sit and watch rape and revenge and murder and con for entertainment. Say, look, I had a hard day at work, ma. I'm a chill. What you gonna watch? Murder. Murder, she wrote. Murder, she wrote. It never computed to me. I don't enjoy watching people get hurt. I don't enjoy watching people die. And one thing runs through me more than anything else is to watch a reenactment of a rape. There's nothing no more debased, more foul to humankind. But that is the media diet. And if you're young enough, they warm you up with cartoons. Decapitations, murder, carnage, explosions, faces being blown up and you left. <laughs> Let's check that out. That's not healthy. Therefore, if I came by and told you there's a black holocaust and that 2.7 billion people must be removed from the face of the earth, you used to people dying. If I tell you that the drug dealer, Mr. Manny, was shooting and shot a little boy between the eyes, you used to people dying. It's unacceptable. You have to look at that, you know. That's not rational. So if my response, every response I see to contradictions between human beings is somebody gets slapped side the head, somebody kicked in the behind, that doesn't stand the reason that a young boy will turn to his wife and say, shut up. Huh? It's all logic. It's all your media diet. It needs to be cleaned out. And I'm not talking in no Puritan sense. I'm talking about we must be able to make the analysis of what we intake in, in terms of imagery and information just like we are in food. <coughs> if we had a reception for you and gave you nothing but garbage, you wouldn't need it. You wouldn't need it. Then how come we ingest so many images that affect our think pro our processes and how we deal with one another? Especially how they worked on black relationships. Man, and I'm going to get there, I'm jumping ahead of myself. Crack and AIDS. Crack was developed in the laboratories of white supremacy. Ain't no b-boy playing the curve saying, you know what I'm going to do, ma? I'm going to chill for a minute. I'm going to my laboratory, ma. I'm going to mix some things up, and I'm going to come up with something that, whoa, beat me up, Scotty, because I control your body. I'm going to do that, because I can do that. It's like that. Give my beat good, man. Give my mic drift up. No, come on. That rained down out of, the, out of the laboratories of the enemy. To blow our families apart, because that's what it does. Has men and women throwing babies up against the wall. Cutting their grandmother's throat for $5 in her fixed income. Ain't nothing wrong with us. It's what's being done to us, we don't realize it. Malcolm said, a child isn't born dumb, a child is made dumb. Ain't nothing wrong with us. We just have to look at what we're taking part in. Crack tore everything apart. You cry and you moan for your relative and your friend who is caught on crack. But you can't help them. Take them in there, your VCR's gone. Love them too closely and you're liable to get the same AIDS that they have. It's a trap. It's a vicious trap and it's closing around us because we haven't made the analysis. And then AIDS. AIDS came out of Fort Detrick, Maryland, founded by Dr. Gallup. Check it. Check the Streckler Memorandum by Dr. Streckler, a white doctor whose brother, who was a lawyer, was killed to try to stop them from telling it. Check Jack Felder. The whole troop is out now. Check the book, Higher Form of Killing. All in your black bookstores live there. That's where the information is. And that's why they're coming at people like me to shut it down. Well, to shut it down, they're going to have to take some lives. And we're willing to give it up because we realize we're at war. AIDS came out of their laboratories. The World Health Organization saying that it was eradicating smallpox when all of Africa inoculating people and gave them the HIV. How is it? that what was supposed to be a homosexual disease now is all over the African world, all over the Caribbean. How is it that they say it comes from the Haitians and they don't even let Haitians in the country? 
And when they do, they lock them up. I was at the Chrome Detention Center in Miami, where they keep our brothers and sisters from Haiti in a concentration camp called the Chrome Detention Center. They still pissed off at the Haitians for kicking Napoleon's butt. <laughs> hey, they stay mad. We don't, we the only one who forgets all oh, that's all right. That's a long time ago. Slavery was a long time ago. Yeah, all right. <laughs> There's a new young brother and sister coming along. I don't want to hear that. It was yesterday. If you close your eyes and tilt your ear out your window, in the deepest of night, you can hear the moan of our ancestors from the torture and brutalization. And if you think these are hard times, think about the day when they said, send me your wife upstairs, I feel frisky. Send me your 13-year-old daughter, I'm a freak right here. Send me your son, I'm a freak. So we got this. That was the hardest time. I don't know how our ancestors got through that. Because they had killed me. But that don't make me no better man. Because we wouldn't have been here if all of us would have been killed. We suffered too long. And for the ancestors, we give tribute. And we love them so dearly. Aborted lives is what they were. So how did we get here? We've looked at crack AIDS as the continuation, as the final blow in the black holocaust. And also famine. All down Africa. Hey, the only way to stop fam, there's enough food in Congo to ship up to Somalia. You don't need no Marines. But we don't control, we don't control Congo. We don't control nothing hardly in Africa. So the food that's right next door to Somalia can't be shipped. The white supremacist has to bring it to you. And remember, these are the same people who put smallpox in the blankets of the red man to kill him. That's the second genocide he did. Now, whenever I speak, usually Jewish people run up to the podium after I finish and say, oh, Brother Dale. I say, whoa. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, all right. <laughs> we got that. <laughs> but Brother Dale, do you think all people, all white people are bad? It doesn't matter. Those who are always in control of your power is always aimed at our juggler vein. I'm not, I can't even be concerned with that. Well, don't you think we had a holocaust of six million people? Hey, man, that was white on white crime. Never heard that, have you? World War I, World War II is white on white crime. Mafia is white on white crime. <laughs> but they tell you two B-boys fighting, that's black on black crime. When they do a white on white crime, the whole world get into the rumble and millions die. But we have to look at it that way. We say black, we need to stop the black on black. Each race has its element of criminal behavior. Each race. Hey, who sold guns to the red man to kill white people? White people. <laughs> Don't tell me you ain't got your times. If you want to see a white time in full effect, turn on living color. They time for days for their 10 pieces of silver, but we don't see them as times. You think white people like, like to watch them? Like the one where, where the guy played uh, Vanilla Ice, white, white baby. Do you think they like that? So, oh, oh, they don't call them Uncle Tiles. I don't know what they call them. Oh, Benedict Carter. <laughs> huh? But we don't get into that. We think we the only one have problems. White supremacy, that is where we stand in the Holocaust. Now here we are. What keeps us a unable to make the analysis? It's the mass media. What is the mass media? Radio, television, film. Print, all of it reinforces the lie. And more than anything, the curriculum in every school in the United States of the American age uh, that is not an independent African school. My son is a senior at Lincoln. So I went out and they won't invite me for nothing. <laughs> he lucky, I said, if you graduate, it'll be amazing. <laughs> you know, they'll probably give you a degree because they think I'll freak. You know, ain't no thing. They ain't gonna invite me. But the vibe is, I was going through the curriculum. Chaucer, Shakespeare, there's more black studies at Temple than there is at Lincoln. 
So then you're talking about the, the Negro college, but I don't want no more Negroes. We have to move to another level. I'll give you every dime I got if you set up a curriculum that's African-centered to make you mentally stable instead of crazy. You understand? It's important. The mass media, let's isolate the elements. First is good old TV. We watch some TV. Anything they give you for free, don't take it. And that's TV and government cheese, see? <laughs> don't take either one of them. The cartoons. The cartoons is the beginning to lay an infrastructure of madness in our children. For example, when we found out that we were Egypt and you ain't had nothing to do with it, and we start celebrating African culture, and we start wearing Tiste cult and X caps, and we was on the move, you never ever move without first grasping your culture. So when the young brothers, now these are the young brothers and sisters, who everybody diss, it's y'all. They diss you. They diss public enemy. They diss all the conscious rap and say praises to Luther. And say praises to Michael Jackson. <laughs> <laughs> and Michael Jackson is a study of complete madness totally successfully done in the discussion. <laughs> he can get caught with Oprah only. Boy, crazy as a loo. <laughs> he gone, man. And not only that, when I get to Michael, I'm going to show you how he interfaced with the New World Order, and you won't miss it. Okay. He's not just crazy. He's in the service of white supremacy. For example, quickly, did you see him at the Super Bowl? Now, Michael, now, he's got African genes. He's choking, shake them all down. Boy, I can jam. You know what I'm saying? But jamming don't get it. We can go down the block and grab three or four people who can jam. If you look back at the Super Bowl, Michael Jackson, first he exploded on top of the stadium, a reasonable facsimile. Hate to think it's two of them. Then he exploded on this side, and I really hate to think it's three. <laughs> then he come blowing out of the stage, right? So he has a feel for the dynamic. What did he have on his chest when he was dancing before he broke into jail? Then he stashed. How come he's only masculine when African rhythms are exploding behind him? How come as soon as the music stopped and all that crotch holding? I think he's searching, but that's my <laughs> I don't know. I, I, I find it very, very insulting to be jumping up and telling young girls babies are having babies and have somebody gyrating in front of them like that. But that's just me. So he's jumping and he's, he's jamming. When he popped out of the stage and put his sunglasses on, he stashed like a man. And he froze there for two minutes. Count it! What did he have on his chest? Did anybody notice? Nah. First, boy, stripped down. Check it out. He had an X. What was the stage sitting on? An X. Check it out. You got it on your video. There's an X there. And all the shots were from above down to show you the X. Why was he dancing on an X? First he broke in the jam, which is hell enough funky, remind me of the good old days of rhythm and blues. Then he broke in the Billy Jean, what's not my love. Another disclaimer of a brother saying that baby ain't mine. But then he took off all that black and all that X and broke into black or white, which was the commercial. It's an integration, this multi uh, 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 multicultural commercial to stop the ad of black culture. And then they ran across with streamers of black hands and white hands holding together. It was all to negate the movement of young people toward Africa by using rap as the vehicle to politicize one another. Hmm? Did anybody ever see the black and white video? Well, when, as long as when it, she's black, he's like, hee <laughs> hee. As long as that was in there, the lights were shining, everybody was happy in multiculturalism, and everybody was happy. But then what happened? 
Michael Jackson turned into what? Uh, oh, what kind of pimp? Black. black pamper. Over in the corner, growling away from the happiness of mankind. A multicultural, with this deadly black pamper who moved away from the body of man, descended down the steps, came through a door that could be either a cage or a jail cell. Check it out, I know you got it on video. And uprighted himself. When that African man, who was a black panther, separated from the family of man, he was savage. He taught stuff for no reason at all. He jumped on cars and he broke the, he grabbed his cops, he burned down the hotel. Because the message is to our young people, left to your own devices, your own culture, you are savage. It is the white man's burden to civilize you. I've been hearing that crap all my life in different forms. They be playing in your mind, silly putty, you know. Yes, man, they sit in think tanks, figuring out how to joke with black young people's minds. And then he goes off the Black Panther. The whole community burnt down in darkness with fear, with terror, while everybody upstairs, he's black, he white, this grotesque people turning into each other. <laughs> they be dealing. They be dealing to stop young minds, young black minds, who have resurrected Malcolm X as the icon. Why? Out of all the heroes we have, and we got many of them, why Malcolm? Because Malcolm survived the dope jam in which young people are in. And he resurrected himself out of the ashes of decay, of debased behavior, to become a leader to sacrifice for African people. That's why the young brothers and sisters on the curb chose Malcolm, because that's the journey that they have to make. Spook Lee and them. <laughs> they come along and say, whoa! The white boys say, listen, they got Malcolm, and remember, it was KRS and Public Enemy, and the young people that resurrected Malcolm, not Spike. He'll go down history as the one, but it wasn't Spike. This guy named Worth, who controlled it for 25 years, the book, The Autobiography of Malcolm X, said, whoa, what are we going to do? To counter the african centered movement, we'll define Malcolm X to you. And what do they do? Spend half the picture with him in the bed with a white one. Never getting to the Pan-Africanist Malcolm. Never getting to Malcolm in Africa, which we're going to talk about next week. Okay? And cutting him off by saying, I prayed with white people who was the whitest of white. Yeah, he said that. But he also said, he said, they didn't have the attitude that white meant boss. And they cut the film there. So all over the world, people are getting an interpretation of Malcolm X that is incorrect, incomplete. If you take me after I die, which might be soon, but after I die, take me from where I left off, not where I was 25 years ago, because I wasn't down, as down. Okay? So you have to take it from where, if you take it W.B. Du Bois, you can't take him from way back when in 1920. You have to take him where he left off. Where did he leave off? Anybody know where he died? Ghana. Ghana. In Africa with Osaji Wokwami and Krumah building a pan-African world that if it was built, we would not be dying on television now. I knew then in 65, when Malcolm X was killed, he was blown into me. February 21st, 1965, me and Malcolm shared the same birthday. And as they drug him out in the, in the news, with his goatee point towards the sky, I'll never forget it. I dedicated myself to the African Revolution. And I ain't nothing particular about me. There were thousands of others who said, all right, you got Malcolm, but you blown him into me. And Malcolm multiplied himself. Right. You in trouble. And they predicted, all during the 60s and 70s, the heroes like the Black Panther Party and the churches that was in full effect feeding our children. Because a study had come out that children cannot learn if they have not eaten that morning. Not only the Panthers, churches, mosques, individuals were feeding children. They tore that program apart, destroyed the Black Panther Party, and gave the food program to the Department of Agriculture to feed our children their surplus. Huh? 
The history is there. The history is there. Cartoons were used in, for Saturday morning turn on the cast cartoons. There's something you will see in almost every cartoon. Egypt, the obelisk, which they took and called it the Washington Monument, that's the obelisk of ancient Egypt. There's a thing called carbon dating. That thing is thousands and thousands and thousands of years old before George Washington even rattled out his slave-making grave. Or the boy was born. Rocky ran up on the art museum steps to celebrate Rome and danced upon it because that was supposed to be Rome and Greco art. Wrong. Those columns come from the Grand Lodge of Luxor in ancient Egypt. We got them there. We got the physical evidence in the discussion. I don't even have to argue these points because the ancestors left it evidence. On the dollar bill, look at it. Pyramid with the third eye. Every symbol we create, they steal the oppressors with. We need to snatch those symbols back and liberate ourselves with the very things our ancestors left. Oh yeah, we got to update them, we got to upgrade them, we have to cut away the fat, and we have to move forward with an intellect that fits these spaces and time. We can handle that. We got a young people that is bad. The music videos, they use the music videos to attack that with Terry McMillan. Then they counterattack by using Damon Wayans and them to make fun of the black woman. Did you see him last week? Did you see them on Living Color? Did you see Damon Wayans lay on his back and look between the legs of the white man and say, ooh, this is a nice view. In front of our children on television, that's television? That's entertainment? Did you see him bend over? The black man read ISIS paper. Dr. Francis Cress Wilson. She'll tell you about that symbolism and what they're attempting to do. And then we wonder why we can't put together relationships. Well, the music videos, look at them. Watch how they shoot our sisters. TNA. You know what TNA stands for? Somebody say it. Yeah, because somebody might not know. Tits and ass. So a video shoots, bing, 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 bing. Therefore, to the young boys, all our sisters ain't them but skis. And they never body parts with no mind. They never shoot the mind. That set you against each other. You're there for all I want to do is a boom, boom, and a boom, boom. I like to boom him. Because <laughs> he's passing it on. Everything about rap ain't positive because they're making the selections. They control the radio station. They control the channels of distribution. They control it. And all you see is the negatives. We can't build this. Then good old Martin is a brother who not only plays Shanae, but plays mother with a mustache to get paid. So where you have the sisters being sold a bit of goods, the brothers are sold a bit of goods. You know what they want? Do you know what they want our men to be? Michael Jackson, baby face or prince? What a choice. Soft punks. Never fight anybody who interface with white supremacy. They want our men to be macho men and the women to be soap opera queens. You can't build a family like that. Can't even build a relationship. All you can do is exploit one another. When you see each other, you like dogs smelling and ready to jump each other. Because we've been reduced. We let someone play in our intellect. Bill Cosby was another thing. It was used to show you black people with no problems. There are some black people with no problems, but there's a lot of black people who can be professional who still interface with the community and help them. So that's to keep the class division. They ain't never had a problem. I would have just loved to see Theo one day run up and say, Ma, you sent me to the store, but you didn't give me enough food stamps. <laughs> hmm? And wouldn't you like to see Rudy with a hole in her pants that wasn't cut in there by the manufacturer? But they can't play us against the middle class. They can't play us. Everybody with money is not bourgeois. The only thing that we have to find out, do you interface with white supremacy? If you do not, you're down. 
Because the struggle is for all of us to get our stuff together and, and make it the best way you can without exploiting your own. That's the dividing line. We want to see people make it. Good old Martin play his mother played Shanene. He played Shanene so good till he had kid from kid and play on. And the boy, you know what he did in front of our children? He bent over and pushed himself back into it. That's where it's supposed to be comedy. Do you notice how prevalent it is? Ain't no accident. The Damon Wayans and everybody is dressing up like females, making fun of our most precious, precious commodity. Our women who delivers the culture through the mother's milk. How then does the sister feel about herself? Okay? HBO comedy. That's where Martin came from. I turned on the tube, couldn't believe what he was saying. Couldn't believe what they were calling humor. That was gutter humor. Black humor is clever. It uses language and situation. It exaggerates. But the chief jokes delivered to us from Red Fox to Richard Price to Martin don't get it. It's negative. The docudrama. They'll show you JFK on the docudrama, which don't have nothing to do with nothing. They'll take any character and begin to create reality. There should be a law against that. That's what they did with Malcolm X. Make up a character. This character didn't exist. Like say, I made him up for drama. JFK, Roots, where the slaves were sitting with a break front. Dining room set. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? They said, well, ain't so bad. I ain't got no break front now. <laughs> In the movies, we see Freddy Krueger. We see Nightmare on Elm Street. But then they attack you. You know how they attack you in a monster picture? They make one called Gremlins. Does this sound like you? After midnight, don't beat them. And they break dance and wear sunglasses. They make it so the kids can't unconsciously not get a negative impression of their own behavior and begin to see it as backwards, counterculture. The Predator had dreadlocks. Okay? Yeah. Color purple made black men look so bad. It reminded me of uh, For Colored Girls. I went to see For Colored Girls. And I sat up in the balcony and was whipped. White people was having a good time. They were all in the front row. They were laughing, but people digest them images. If you don't, no matter what, no matter what you watch and what you do, never relax your mind and make it tabula rasa and let people write on it. Keep your consciousness and break it down. You can make a game out of breaking down negative images and ideas coming through the media. New Jack City was just a date of Superfly. That's all it was. Superfly worked on my generation. Why not New Jack City on yours? And Jungle Fever, and I'm supposed to be at a conference with Spike Lee, but I'm going to be in Atlanta. I won't make it. I was going to ask him, why did he call it Jungle Fever? Why didn't he call it Cave Fever? <laughs> why are you worried on us? We want our profits. The music, R&B, went to disco to destroy our culture. Disco was made up by recording executives who said the bass and heavy bottom of James Brown and them was intimidating the white people. Lighten it up and play. <laughs> and then put some orchestration on top of it and we'll cross over, baby, we'll cross over. And for 10 years we suffered because of that. It was the brilliance of our children who don't get no credit. Who said, dang, I want to make a record to talk about our woes. I want to make a record to talk about my aspiration. I want to talk, make a record just to make a record. But they got Donna Summer who played with her German husband in an all-German orchestra that cracked for decades. And the culture was dying. So they said, well, how are we going to make a record? They said, well, um, you make up some rhymes. Oh, okay, I'll make up some rhymes. I got them right here. But we ain't got no musicians. Uh, and we got no turntables. They don't play the right speed. Right? They create a culture. But they don't get no credit for that. Anybody else create culture? Madison Avenue can't take its hands off it. Every commercial got scratching. 
every cartoon, every product, they dance in hip hop, hip hop, hip hop style, hip hop style. And then the brothers say, well, we still ain't got no music. We'll never make a record. He said, well, you go. <laughs> hip hop was born out of the suffering of black kids and backlash to disco. Nobody's going to tell the young people that. They say, turn that noise down. I'm listening to Luther. And Luther said, for only one night, baby. Leave your husband home for only one night. Turn that fight to powers to be down. 911 is a joke. Turn it down. Welcome to the Terror Dome. Turn it down. I want to hear something that moves me. So we're not listening to the young people as they're attempting to speak to us. Hip hop is a glorious, glorious tool. But just like reggae, it's going to be destroyed. Public Enemy and KRS One of them is being counted by Hammer, two young men called Kid and Play. Kid and Play? If a young brother walk up to me, he's 20 years old, he tells me, hey, my name's Kid. <laughs> What's your name, Holmes? Play. <laughs> well, y'all go play, and I ain't kidding. <laughs> they take Will Smith, that soft thing, and promote it. Give him a television show, put him in Bel Air, and give him the bourgeois dream. You know? I just did a video for the conference that Chuck D and them are at. I produced it. And my theme music was Everyone, Everything's Gonna Be All Right. You know that one? They call it Ghetto Bastard. You ever hear that? You ever hear the pain in that brother's voice? He said, You tell me to do something positive, well, positive ain't where I live. And he tell him, I never had a dad. And he run it down, listen to the words and listen to the creation. They're articulating for themselves. We don't need anthropologists, sociologists, and caseworkers finding out they're talking to us. Let's interface with that. When I was coming up in the 60s, I turned to an elder brother and said, we're black and we're proud, ain't we pops? He said, y'all black and you can't help it. I don't know why y'all burning out these studies. So I said, when I get to be your age, I'm going to have something to say. That ain't enough. That don't get it. So Hammer, Jazzy Jeff, and Kid, and play. And they push them, and they push them. But still, the records are selling underground. They can't stop the culture, but they're injuring it. Then the culture bandits are kicked in. And you got a bunch of Irish rappers called House of Pain. The singing Boston Celtics. <laughs> Larry Bird in the group. You got Vanilla Ice. You got third base. You got the Beastie Boys running into your culture, trying to define it. And they don't just use rap. They dress like you, walk like you, have mannerisms like you. It's just the way they killed Billie Holiday and gave you Peggy Lee. It's just the way they tell you Sanborn is the king of jazz. Gary Mulligans. Culture bandits. I can never take over their culture. I wouldn't want to, first of all. That's your thing. I couldn't even judge who's the best at your culture. How could I do that? Why would I want to do that? We have to guard and protect our culture. It's precious. The school curriculum, brothers and sisters, people died in the street get our kids in school, and the blood will run all over. But the curriculum has not changed. It's not delivering the infrastructure for liberating mentality. It's delivering the infrastructure and the glorification of the white supremacy and the culture bandits. Picasso was a culture bandit. Stolen legacy, Greek philosophy is taken from Af Africa. The father of medicine was Imhotep of Egypt. I don't even know the other boy's name. If that's the father of medicine, then why are they developing AIDS? One develops a healing process, the other one destroys. And as you've seen the inauguration, I'm going to give you a roll call. And I want you to remember. 
because Clinton was allowed to be president of the United States to usher in the final phase of the Black Holocaust, and that is the internal consolidation and destruction of black people internally. They feel that controlling Somalia and the Horn of Africa, controlling the Panama Canal, controlling Southern Africa, breaking down Germany and bringing all the white people to the party because they're only 10% of the population, they need everybody. Breaking down Russia, their white supremacist brother from the left, and bringing Western Europe under one currency and one flag. That's the new world order that's aimed at Pan-Africanism, which we are building, which as they break down, and we build, and they break down. That is it, given to us by those who came before Garvey, but really expressed by the United Negro Improvement Association of Marcus Mosea Garvey. Building it in one of his legions, and one of his captains in Detroit was Elijah Muhammad. Malcolm X's father was a Garvey. Ho Chi Minh of Vietnam used to go to Garvey meetings to find out how he organized around culture. So the answer is there. You found it in culture, but you must protect it. And it must become a citadel, a bedrock in which you build and you rumble from to first seize your consciousness and think about everything is what does this mean to black people? What does this mean to my children? What does this mean to the year 2000? Or else we'll all die. Don't think we can't die? Ask the Awak and Kalanagos of the so-called Caribbean, Carib meaning cannibal, I don't use that term, from the island. Ask the red men who ruled this land where well, they slaughtered all the buffalo and gave them smallpox on, the, on their blankets and then screwed them and gave them syphilis and decreased their number till they just a handful. Ask them when Hitler jumped on white folk. That's what they are, white folk. Hmm? But we cry more for Anne Frank than we cry for old babies. A baby that they're holding up. Do you know when that video was shown and that baby held up from Somalia, that baby is now dead. Do you know that they will have not only malnutrition, mental retardation. Do you know that the same thing is happening here? All you have to do is step out in Philadelphia or anywhere else and see our people stuck to the curb like the waste material of history. See them laying there on vets. See them begging you for a quarter. Look at it. The Holocaust is here. It's all around you. And it's after you, 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 you. And all the babies. Do you know that they have a thing called the Violence Initiative? In which they said, we feel through research that we need to inject five-year-old black children to take the hostility out of them. And all, every city I go in, black people are organizing against the violence initiative. Do you know we eating government cheese? Do you know? We don't even know what's in them 40s that they only sell in the black community. Or those cigarettes with the menthol that only we smoke. These are serious times that you face. But you come from a people, you come from the ancestors who could handle and we can handle this as long as we clear out, as long as we clear out our brains. There's a roll call of dishonor that I'm going to do right now. Because everyone who went to the inauguration was leading our people, Pied Piper, to the hand of Clinton, who's a Rhodes Scholar and works for the Trilateral Commission. Every one of them. And each one of them, as you hear their name, is paid. There's a difference between the grassroots people, what they call in Jamaica the sufferer, and those who are impacting on our suffering. Michael Jackson was there. Maya Angelou, who used to be down with Malcolm. Wynton Marcellus, Dion Warwick, Ray Charles, Stevie Wonder. <laughs> Diana Ross, Whoopi Goldberg, Harry Belafonte, Sidney Poitier. James Earl Jones, Ashford and Simpson, 
Grover Washington Jr., who loved to play the national anthem before the Sixers, Aretha Franklin, John H. Johnson, of Johnson Publications, Jet and Ebony, which ain't told the truth in so many years, wouldn't know the truth if they tripped over. Chuck Berry, Mr. Rock and Roll, Oprah Winfrey, who said, Michael, you need PR? Come on my show for 90 minutes, and we'll try to clean your shit up. He said, well, I really got a skin disease that turned me white. And my nose, yeah, I did a little to my nose, a little. <laughs> Dr. Frankenstein grabbed that chumpy and carved, carved, carved. <laughs> Can't hit him with it. Do you know what? A, a plastic surgeon takes a mallet and breaks all your bones. And put wire in there and builds you up. He hates black people so much, so he stay under the armpit of Elizabeth Taylor. He hates you. He is crazy as a loon. And having a bad childhood ain't enough. It ain't no excuse. Bill Cosby, Alvin Alley, Alvin Alley's, Cicely Tyson, read Miles Davis' book about him and Cicely Tyson at the White House. Okay. And LL Cool J. He wrote the, he had, he said, he wrote a, a rap for the inaugural. And he says, Clinton has music in his soul. What soul? How can you be down with Cecil Rhodes and have a soul and have a conscience? He lead you, Pipe Piper. Follow him and you die. Benny King, Will Smith, Luther Vandross, B.E. King, B.B., uh, not uh, Benny King, not B.B. Old Jesse Trilateral Jackson, <laughs> Hammer Man, Major Jackson, Dinks, Dellums, and all other sorts of sordid political fellow. Now this ain't a nice thing to say, this ain't a nice picture. And this ain't gonna get me no points and I won't be invited to the cocktail soon. However, the truth shall set you free, we're gonna kick it large. We can survive this if we put things in place. Some of these people are misguided. Some of these people, they don't understand. Some of these people interface and know what time it really is and say we in the mix. All you have to do is look at the history of the so-called Jewish people during their Holocaust and you will find out that so many of them was in league with Adolf Hitler. You're always going to have that. Don't feel bad about that. Every people had that. Only we can mold the future. And you can only mold the future if you know what time, what time it really is. Contradictions mean Two things can't occupy the same space at the same time. You can't be down with our culture playing the blues and have Elvis Presley as your number one flute. It can't be done, scientifically thinking. Then somebody's lying to lead us astray. If you remember Billy, uh, or Billy Carter or Jimmy Carter, they had the same feeling that, oh, the black man gonna make it down. Jesus, he come again. <laughs> Jesus, he come, look at him. We got blind hair, we got blue eyes, we're going to set us free. And we ain't going to have to do the dirty job that we're going to have to do. Meanwhile, all you have to do is look around you and you see death. Death is so close to you, there should be a stench in here. Death is so close to you, it's one puff away from you. It's one vial away from you. It's one unprincipled sexual encounter away from you. They've put it all around you surrounding you to decrease your number. But we ain't going out like that. They ought to know better. And the reason they didn't drop them bombs is because there's only two things would have came out of that bomb. That black folks and Chinese. They knew they can't stand, they done cut a hole in those old layers, they're gonna be the first to die. Because they don't have no melanin. They done polluted the water, and they're gonna be the first to die. You know why we still alive? Because of our wide nose. We can work from can't see in the morning to can't see at night because it took more oxygen to the bloodstream and the brain. And why did the Irish indentured farmer die? I can't get no air. Why did the red man die? I can't get no air. And why will Michael die soon? I can't get no air. <laughs> I couldn't resist that. It's been a pleasure. And please don't kill the messenger, huh?
But I have to drop these vibes and I'm not the only one. Go into your black bookstore and check out what I'm saying. It ain't in a library. It ain't there. Check it out. Check out a book by uh, uh, Stockwell called The Praetorian Guard. He's an ex-CIA agent who worked against the Angolan people who now come to testify. You have to see the Streckler Memorandum to see what AIDS really is out of venereal disease. And that there has been AZT kills you faster than AIDS. Just like they throw you down for cancer and give you some chemotherapy. So let's guard ourselves, our children. Knowledge is the key. And as we come together, we're going to feel better about each other because we understand. Nobody wants to die a fool, and nobody wants to not live a full life and pass it on to their children and build a tomorrow. It's been a pleasure being at Delaware State. I hope you come next week with Black Nationalist Day. Well, I'll be here, and Brother Haru will be here, and Dr. Um, uh, Damu will be here, and I can't wait to meet him. And uh, they're going to be discussing black nationalism. Because black nationalism is, is common sense. What I've been talking about is white supremacy. You can only negate it with black nationalism. Black nationalism only means you care more about yourself and your own than anybody else. It does not negate your humanistic principles. It just says, I naturally care about my family first. After I take care of that business, then we'll see what we can do for you. That's all black nationalism means. Malcolm said that a long time ago and many, many before them. It was said by Sin Q. It was said by Nat Turner. It was said by Queen Inzinga. It was said by Queen Hatshepsut. It was said by Imhotep. And it should be said by us. Don't believe the hype is a sequel as an equal. Can I get that through to you? Is I want you to check out everything I said because the evidence hangs, holds up. It's at your bookstore. Go over to Brother Rich's bookstore and check him out. And yeah, this is a commercial. Because the goods, they're the only books that are selling a black book. The only books they got selling is well, Madonna take off all her clothes and look real skeezy. <laughs> Did Nancy Reagan screw Frank Sinatra? Ew. Do I care? <laughs> <laughs> That's what, but we are using information as sustenance to build us up, to build us up, to prepare us for whatever it is we have to do. We no longer in the 60s, so we don't need the drama pulling guns before guns are necessary or before the people call for them. We're pulling for our intellect and putting ourselves on the same page so that we can reason and come up with the strategies and tactics to liberate ourselves. It is a privilege to be an African, but Africans must unite. It is, it is a privilege to be an African, but African must unite. I have to tell you, I have to end with a poem that I wrote many moons ago. As a child, I wondered as a man I knew. As a child, I wondered as a man I knew. Broken dreams and promises, bad news with postage due. Nostril aching smells of sadness. Embryos trying to dodge the knife. We're all splattered with the urban blues. As the child, I wondered as a man I knew. Death on a shingle, cold ground calls, nothing to lose. Multi-hued robots accustomed to being used. Powdered face gun toters grab us off all the boots. As a child, I wondered, as a man I knew. Thank you. We give the brother another hand. Um, at the present time, um, any questions that need to be answered can be answered at the reception afterwards at the Kyle Bookstore located at Carroll's Corner Shopping Center. Um, Richard Sheffield will come to us now with remarks and 